Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Uh, welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you and as you know this is the DADM 2 which is data analysis and decision making 2 course under NPTEL MOOC series and this total course duration is 30 hours which is for 12 weeks. Each week we have uh, 5 lectures each being for half an hour and as you know that after each week we have one assignment. So, we'll, in totality we will have 12 assignments and the final examination. And as you can see in the slide, this is the 15th lecture which is the end of the third week. So, if you remember we are considering uh, the different types of uh, return to scale, uh, decreasing return to scale, increasing return to scale, then constant return to scale. So, continuing the discussion, let us consider the increasing return to scale, but now with the input being measured along the y axis and the output being measured along the x axis. So, if you have that your graph would be as shown where if you consider say for example, this only one issue is that this blue line which I have drawn horizontally onto the left is too close to the y x axis. So, you may not be able to differentiate, but actually whatever I have discussed for the decreasing return to scale and increase all the three different uh, graphs. One was uh, with input was in the x axis, output in the y axis and in the other case input was in the y axis and output was in the x axis. Then we had the combination. Then that was basically for the uh, decreasing return to scale. Now, for the increasing return to scale again we will have the same combinations. Input once being drawn on the x axis and the next instant being drawn in the y axis and then we will come to the constant return to scale. So, in this case if you consider any DME which is inefficient which is where I am hovering my, my stylus or this electronic pen. So, obviously, there can be three different situations. One for the same level of output what I can do is that because if it is an increasing return to scale I would basically technically try to go up which is not right because in that case you will be increasing the input and maintaining the same level of output which is not possible. Obviously, I would not do that more. It is possible, but I would not do that. In the second case, we will uh, consider that we go horizontally onto the left. That means, at the same level of input, we decrease the output and uh, we have the DMUs as shown as the pink and the blue one. The pink one being for the case when is efficient on the efficient frontier and then the blue blue one being again the DME which is efficient on the efficient frontier. Another concept can be where you go diagonally that means, you are trying to increase decrease both the input and the out output. So, obviously, in this case we will try to take in the in increasing return to scale we will try to basically decrease the output, but maintaining the same level of input such that our efficiency increases. Now, can consider the constant return to scale. So, in the constant return to scale obviously, it is a straight line uh, with respect to input or output being drawn on the x axis or y axis whichever it is. So, in this case we have output along the y, y axis input along the x axis if you reverse the diagram in the sense that you have input along the um, y axis and output along the x axis the graph would all be straight in means in the sense it means that for one unit increase in the input the output also increases in the same way such so, as so that the constant return to scale is maintained. So, in this case if you have a DMU is in inefficient. So, in this case the DMU can go either vertically up horizontally on to the left or right depending on which which type of diagram you are looking at that means output on the y axis or input on the y axis. Uh, you can go horizontally onto the left or horizontally onto the right or in, in the case you can either go vertically up or vertically down depending on how you want to reach the efficient frontier. So, obviously, in this case you will either concentrate on either the input and the output to maintain your same efficiency. Now, consider the, uh, the case for um, changing return to scale where the return to scale varies. So, in this case you have a the diagram is like this 
where you have the graph and here remember I am measuring the input along the y axis, output along the x axis and my actual graph is like this. So, one set is decreasing, another set is increasing. So, if you see the DMU which is inefficient where I am hovering my stylus. So, it can either go horizontally onto the right, horizontally onto the left which are the blue lines or you can come vertically down. So, there are two graphs, but they are almost similar, they overlap each other. So, you are seeing only one pink line and another can be you can go radially such that you go take the least distance and reach the curve which is basically 90 degrees at the point which is the tangent. So, it can either go uh, on to the, the, the left um, bottom corner another can can be on the right bottom corner. So, obviously, when you take the green line, then you are trying to basically maintain a proportion of the input output in order to basically increase the efficiency. While if you go horizontally onto the right or the left, you are basically trying to concentrate on maintaining a same, same level of input, but trying to basically increase the or decreasing the output depending on how the things are. So, if it is a decreasing return to scale, so obviously, maintaining the same input, you will definitely try to decrease the output such that your efficiency increase. In the other case, when it is increasing return to scale, you will try to just reverse the situation. Now, we will consider the actual optimization problem and come back to the solution of that later on how you solve it. So, consider that what we mean by efficiency. When we are talking about efficiency, we always talk about the ratio of the output to the input. And when you are talking of the efficiency, actually we will try to maximize the efficiency. So, if there are different type of DMEs, we will try to basically maximum, ma maximize them and port from the highest to the lowest, so that the ranking would be easy. So, we can compare them. Now, another picture can be, which I will come later on to uh, through the solution or through the formulation. Let me use the word formulation. Another can be that why not basically consider the in ratio of the efficiency, that means the ratio of the input to the output and they basically try to rank them from the lowest to the highest such that if I rank them from the highest to the lowest considering the op output to the input, I should technically get the same type of result. So, these are the two approaches which I am going to follow or which we will follow. Now, consider that is a that is an output oriented model considering the kth DMU, k is that small k. So, obviously, small k ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4 till capital K. So, obviously, we are taking an arbitrarily any DMU for our consideration. Now, it is an output oriented model. So, obviously, the emphasis would be on the output as such and I will discuss that how it can be done. So, consider the, the efficiency of that kth DMU. So, if I consider the efficiency of the kth DMU, the, the ratio would be what is the ratio and what I want to do, I will discuss. So, the ratio is basically the multiplication of the weights for the output multiplied by the the output divided by the weights of the input multiplied by the input. That means, I am taking the summation in the in the denominator you will have the summation of all the v v's into y's for all the combinations of, of the output which you have for that kth DMU only, only kth because you are not going to consider any anything else. So, if there are 10 DMUs, I am going to consider arbitrarily, say for example, the fifth one. And once you understand that, then I will explain that how it can be uh, extended for the first, second, third, fourth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. It can be, uh, fifth is just an arbitrary example, it could have been anything else also. So, we will take the ratio of, of the sum in the numerator, you have the sum of the multiplication terms of which is basically the output and the output weights which is v j k multiplied by y j k. Now, here k is the DMU number and j is basically the subscript pertaining to the output only. Now, in the denominator what we have, we have the summation of u i k into x i k where again k is the DMU number and i is the input based on which we are trying to consider. So, if you want to maximize the ratio of the output to the input, what are the constraints? Now, the constraints are very simple. So, what we are trying to do, we are trying to maximize the efficiency of the k DMU corresponding to the fact that the ratios of all the DMUs, ratios means the output to the input ratios of all the DMUs should always be bound with less than equal to 1. So, what I am trying to do is that I am trying to increase the efficiency of the kth one, but at the same time trying to basically ensure that in the constraints the efficiency of all the other DMUs including the kth one are all less than equal to 1. So, in the objective function we have 
the maximization one and in the constraints we have the ratios of the output to the input which is the efficiency and all being less than equal to 1. Now, let us look at this problem. If you look at this problem, this is a non-linear problem because this is a ratio. So, I have to basically convert it into a simple linear optimization problem so that we are able to solve. So, what do you do? So, before I go, let me again repeat it. You are taking the maximization of the ratio of the output to the input for the kth DMU, kth is arbitrary and the such this constraints are all the efficiencies for all the capital K number of DMUs where you are taking the ratio of the output to the input and each ratio is basically less than equal to 1. Now, this I said is a non-linear um, uh, formulation. So, I need to basically convert into a linear formulation. So, this is what I do. I take out the denominator in the objective function forcefully put it as 1. So, that means I am pegging the in, in input to a ratio of 1 and in that respect I am trying to increase the output. So, once I see the objective function it now becomes maximization of the summation of v j k into y j k where again j is basically the output number k is the input number and what happens to the, the constraints is what I am going to again discuss. So, the constraints are like this. The first one if you remember the first constraint was basically summation which was uh, less than equal to 1 was the summation of v j 1 because that is the first DMU multiplied by y j 1 this is the first DMU and j is as you know I am repeating it is the output number divided by summation of u i 1 into x i 1 which was less than equal to 1. So, what I do is that I take the denominator onto the right hand side and again bring it. So, now it becomes a simple less than equal to type constraints with no denominator. Then I bring, bring the right hand side on the less than uh, equal less than equal to sign I bring it on the left hand side and I do it repeatedly for all of them apart from the last one where last one means before the kth one where I am basically trying to put that input bundle as equal to 1 because I am trying to maximize the output such that that I am putting a restriction on the input it should be 1. This is basically I am trying to rationalize it or normalize it. So, now actually when we started we had basically k number of, of the constraints and the k number of constraints continues to remain the same, but in this case the constraints have taken a change they are now placed in a different format where all the k minus 1 constraints which are there we does not consider the kth DMU are of this form. What is this form? It is summation of v j k v j whatever the k uh, DMU is multiplied by y j small k minus summation of u i k into into x i k that should be less than equal to 0 and the last kth, plus, kth uh, constraint would be such that the ratio for the case when you are taking the input as 1 will be ensured. Now, what, what, what is the change we are having? The change we are having is that we are slowly trying to convert the non-linear optimization problem into a uh, um, linear optimization problem with the same number of constraints and same number of objective functions. So, objective function gets converted from a non-linear ratio to linear ratio 0.1 and the constraints which are also non-linear are slowly converted to linear constraint for k minus 1 everything is less than equal to 0 and for the case when we put the being the kth one we are forcefully putting the input as 1. So, obviously now we have all linear constraints. Now, let us consider the input oriented model. So, in the input oriented model what we do is that we try to maximize in, in the in the in, in the output oriented model we have tried to maximize now in the input oriented model we will try to minimize so the minimize in the sense that we will try to minimize the ratio of the input to the output and the constraints would be such that rather than trying to put them as less than equal to 0 we will try to basically put them as greater than equal to 0 and do the same conceptual fundamental change in the problem such that it gets converted from a nonlinear problem to a linear problem so this is how i do Objective function is minimization of the ratio of the input to the output. So, obviously in the input which is the numerator we have summation of u i k into x i k and in the denominator which would basically be for the output we have summation of v j k into i j k that is point 1. Point number 2 for the such this constraints we will have all them of them as greater than 1. So, what we have is basically 
again the ratios, but the ratios as they being greater than 1 what we have what we are doing is that trying to take the ratio of the input to the output such that the input to output is definitely greater than 1 and we put it like this. The first constraint is summation of u i 1 into x i 1 divided by v j 1 into y j 1 that is greater than 1. Similarly, for the second one it is summation in the numerator is summation u i 2 into x i 2 divided by v j 2 into y j 2 and continue it for the all number of k number of dmu's. Now, again the question happens is they are all all non-linear objective function and, and non-linear um, uh, constraints. So, we need to basically convert them into a linear constraint and linear objective function we do the same thing. Here now we want to minimize the, the input the, because the input is an input oriented model, but keep the output value as 1 that means in the first case when we took the output oriented model we fixed the, the input at level 1 and try to basically push the objective function which is the, uh, 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 the output as far as possible as high as possible that was case 1. In the case 2 when we take the ratio of the input to the output we basically put the output and level as 1 uh, normalize as 1 and try to basically push down uh, uh, input as low as possible such that we get the greatest efficiency in both the cases. So, now we basically have a minimization of summation of u i k into x i k which is for the k dmu and the constraints are like this. The first constraint, so what you do is that you take the denominator for all the constraint to the right hand side then you bring the, the right hand value to the left hand side and hence it becomes greater than 0. So, the equations are as follows apart from the last one I will come to the last one again in the similar way as we did for the output oriented model. The constraints are summation of u i 1 into x i 1 that is basically the bundle of, of in, uh, inputs minus summation of v j i into y j i which is basically the bundle of outputs. So, difference between them should be greater than 0 and we do it for all the DMUs apart from the kth one because for the kth one we have ensured that the summation of VJI, VJK into YJK is equal to 1 because we are trying to minimize the bundle of, of uh, inputs. That means as I repeated, I will repeat again in the first case we basically fixed the input and try to push output as far as possible or as high as possible in the second case we fix the output and try to push down input as low as possible in order to in both the cases try to maximize the efficiency. In the optimization formulation for where both input and output are utilized we will basically try to uh, do a very simple this is not the actual way how the DA is solved, but we will try to basically take a very very different approach and try, try to take a, a multi objective problem where we try to maximize the bundle of say for example outputs and minimize the bundle of inputs which we take. So, it can be maximization of one function and minimization on the other function or it can be maximization of the output minus the, in, in, uh, in the input this is because the minus sign with the maximization sign will basically make it a minimum one. So, what would be the constraint? This constraints would be basically fixed both to the input and the output. So, if I consider the optimum ratios of the maximum values of the inputs for each and every DMUs as i 1 star, i 2 star, i 3 star till i k star. Similarly, for the outputs I have o, o 1 uh, star, o 2 star, o 3 star till o k star. So, obviously, uh, k, this k values are the suffix sorry. So, i when I mean i 1 it basically i suffix 1 star is the maximum input I can uh, utilize. Similarly, when I have o suffix 1 star is the maximum output which I can get from from DME 1. Similarly, the suffix changes depending on which DME I am going to consider. So, if you consider the, the input and the output, so it will be I am not going to go into the details because the problems will be very similar when we solve it and it will be kept simple. So, what we ensure is that the bundle of the inputs for the ith one in DME should be always less than equal to I 1 star and the bundle of outputs for the first DME should always be greater than equal to we want this is the objective functions we want to have it will be greater than equal to O star where I I star or I values are the maximum input utilization and uh, allowed for k, k DMU and the O star is the minimum output needed to uh, or assured from the k the DMU. 
So, the so the thus technically the above set of problems concerning both output input and, and, and combination of input output models each of which runs k number of such times identifying the relative scores of the DMUs and thus in each set of simple linear optimization problem because we have been able to convert this, uh, this uh, non-linear optimization problem using this transformation into simple linear optimization problem. Thus in each of the simple linear uh, programming mo model each DMU tries to maximize the efficiency score by choosing a unique combination using a unique combination of both input as well as output weights. Thus, a DMU is considered efficient in case it is its scores is basically less than 1. If it is 1, it is efficient, but I will come to the efficiency concept later on. And else, if the score is less than 1, obviously it is said to be inefficient. If it is equal to 1, we will call it an efficient one. But obviously, efficient one would also have a different connotation, which I will come to that later. So, let us consider few simple formulation problem. Let us consider an example and then proceed. Machine 1 produces 100 pieces of an item say x, y, z per hour per day a shift of 8 and the input utilization is 10 units of raw materials and 2 units of labor. Machine 2 which is DMA 2 produces 80 pieces of the same item x, y, z per day and the input utilizations are 8 units of raw materials and 4 units of labor. Machine 3 which is the MU3 produces 120 pieces of XYZ and the input and the labor utilizations are two, 12 units of uh, raw materials and 1.5 labor hours. So, this is how we will formulate. So, if you, if you are told to find out the utilization on the machine considering the output oriented model, we would simply calculate the respective efficiency considering the output oriented model where you put the output in the numerator and the input in the denominator and try to basically maximize that. While in the input oriented model, we will try to put the ratio of the input to the output, fix um, the output at a level of 1. 1 is basically a normalization 1 and try to minimize the input. So, from machine 1, obviously it will be maximization of V11 into 100, which is for the output and the, um, uh, and the input you have, because there are two things, which is raw materials and labor. So, they were, they were basically a 10 and 2. So, it will be U11 into 10 plus u21 into 2 which will come into the in the denominator. Such this constraints obviously they would basically be uh, be on in the similar line. So, the such that constraints are would be now 3 because there are 3 DMUs and they would be as follows. I will only first read the numerator and then read the denominator and each of these 3 equations would be less than equal to 1 because you are now trying to do the output oriented model where output will be increased subject to the constraint that uh, subject to the idea that the input would basically be fixed at a level of 1 unit and you will try to increase the output as far as possible. So, the constraints are in the numerator is V11 into 100 while the corresponding denominator for the first equations would be U11 into 10 plus U21 into 2. So, the second constraint numerator is V12 into so this 1 and 2 I am repeating are in the suffix V12 into 80 and the corresponding denominator is u12 into 8 plus u22 into 4 and the third constraint the numerator is v13 into 120 and in the denominator you have u13 into 12 plus u23 into 1.5 and each of this constraint would basically be less than equal to 1. So, and similarly when I go the formulation for the second and the third, I will only concentrate initially on the objective function and then basically give a very general feedback about the constraint. So, machine to the DMU2, the maximization would be, this is a maximization problem, sorry, I should have repeated it, but I am sure you understand that because this being an output oriented model, maximization would be V12 into 80 and in the numerator you have U12 into 8 plus U22 into 4 and the constraints remains exactly as they are only remembering that when you convert this non-linear optimization problem to the linear optimization problem, be careful that for which of the constraints are you trying to basically put it at 1. Because if it is the first optimization problem, then it will be corresponding to the first constraint. If it is the second optimization problem, it will be corresponding to the second constraint and so on and so forth. So, as there are 3 um, uh, DMUs, you will have basically 3 optimization problem and, and you will basically do the, the changing of the constraint with respect to the first, second and the third. So, we are going to just read the initial non-linear formulation simple case 
for the third DME, we have already completed the first and the second. The third DME will be maximization of V13 into 120 which is in the numerator and in the denominator you have U13 into 12 plus U23 into 1.5 and the constant exactly remains the same. Now the question obviously as we have already discussed is that in the conceptual framework that we need to basically convert this um, objective functions for 1, 2, 3 or considering these 3 uh, optimization problems 1, 2, 3 into a linear case. So, this is what we do. In the first case, we will remove the denominator and put the denominator as 1. So, obviously, it will be as this. So, what is the objective function? Objective function was initially was the ratio of output to input. So, our input is removed put into the constraint. So, hence it will be maximization of V11 into 100. What happens to the input um, the constraints? So, you have basically uh, you are taking the denominator onto the right hand side because it less than type and then again bring it to the left hand side. So, now you have a linear uh, problem which is V11 into 100 and minus the time which is basically the, the case for the uh, objective function is because for the constraints you are taking the, the denominator onto the right hand side which I am just repeating bring it to the right hand side. So, it becomes V11 into 100 minus U11 into 10 plus U21 into 2 less than 0. Similarly, you do for the second one for the third one. And an extra constraint which comes which I thought I will basically mention it when we are doing the formulation is that the denominator which you had for the objective function for the first DMU now basically comes as an added constraint in the first optimization problem and you will basically repeat it doing for the second DMU and the third DMU. So, with this I will end this uh, 15th lecture which is the third week of classes over and continue discussing more of the the DA part here and then later on go into solving the DA problems. Have a nice day and thank you very much.